displaying her tail very nicely, oh, isn't she? Oh, until, oh until the camera came on. Come on. Come on, sweetie. Ah. Tail. So this is Ursul, who you've met before on the vlogs. And this is an unusual bird. This is my son Kyle's bird. It's having a rest at this time of year. And this is an American kestrel male crossed with a female peregrine falcon. Um, we were just admiring how beautiful she was and now she's not going to stand in and said, oh yeah, look at that. So she's got her adult plumage. These hybrids often are very much a mixture of the two parents, very much indeed in their style of flying and their appearance. Slightly psychotic birds to work with. Fortunately, Ursula isn't. <laughs> um, certainly doing one in Spain where they've got wild quail. A bit hit and miss here in the UK as a falconry bird, but look at that, what a beautiful creature it is. Mm. And hopefully she'll be back up in the air and flying this spring and summer. And more than likely, if she's staying here, Ursula will probably be training her as an indoor falcon and then back outside. Very beautiful indeed. Yeah. Look at that. Gorgeous. What a pretty little creature indeed. Yeah, look at that. Lovely. Look at that. Thanks, Ursula. Cheers yeah. for that. Oh, yeah, look at that. That is sweet. <laughs> Thanks yeah. very much. Look at this dark bit of river. Looks like it's just a deep, dark stretch. I don't know if you can see, it's just a huge shoal of silverfish, mostly roach. Literally, that whole dark area is fish. The Hampton Shears rivers, which are pretty overfished and just various problems. That's nice to say indeed. The old snake pit or jigsaw pit in Northamptonshire. I used to fish here a lot 20 or 30 years ago. Every weekend we'd be here. My old mates Mick and Pete. And one species on the menu, well not on the menu, the target species were pike. Crystal clear water. Never was really a dead bait water. Often the clear waters aren't so hot with dead baits. Pike are not stupid, they've got good eyesight. But just now and again, we get a nice big, beautiful, beautifully coloured clear water pike out of this intricate and lovely water. I wonder if there's any in here nowadays. There's a cormorant in the tree there. I remember seeing one of those swallow a roach that was about two pounds in weight, down in one. Of course, we put ours back. What a beautiful day to get out and about in the countryside. Jackie and the dogs have got bored and gone off without me. It's that kind of, for the naturalist, that likes sort of the creepy crawlies of the world and reptiles and things, it's, it's that kind of dead time, there's not a lot going on. It's the quiet time, it's the sleepy time for the countryside. Of course there's lots of fish in the lake, moving around still. It's a good time to see birds because there's no leaves on the trees. But it's that time of year as well, towards the end of January, where it's a turning point. And in the next few weeks, things are certainly gonna awaken. And if we do get some mild weather and some damp nights for sure, the frogs, the toads, the newts are all going to be heading back to their breeding ponds. And the pond life's really going to start again and kick into action. I've actually already seen on social media there's frogs spawning around in the country. Um, nothing in our pond yet. But it is going to soon start to wake up. And all this twigginess that you can see through will be lush green vegetation. Oh yeah, 
come on May. That's what I say. What a beautiful time of the year that'll be. But for now, cool fresh air, unwinding our minds, not thinking about work for a change, and just enjoying the countryside and the peace. So we're heading up to the top field here at Icarus Falconry with head falconer Joe Askew and Horizon the Chilean Blue Eagle Buzzard. Now this is a species not familiar to that many people, but here in the UK there's one or two people flying these for pure falconry. Uh, Margaret Cox flies a female and the female birds are probably bigger uh, for hunting. But Horizon here, his job, or there, his job really is to fly for our experience day guests. I thought I'd do this intro to him before we get to the field because he only does his super duper flying on a high windy day today. As you can probably hear, I'm sure, not good for filming. So we're gonna see if he will put on his performance, the massive wow factor this bird has for our experience day guests uh, in the hands of Joe Askew. So we're gonna probably, <laughs> we're gonna go and fly him, but I'm gonna, overlay some sound when we do because it is howling wind up there by the way you can see more maintenance for me i'm painting uh new enclosures so that's my least favorite animal if you didn't know by the way oh, i can't zoom in can i look at that horses i'm gonna go past two ruddy horses to get into that field yeah and there they're my animal we've all got that one animal that gives us the heebie-jeebies horses are mine let's go and see what this superb bird does
So when you're renovating aviaries or building aviaries or enclosures for animals and you're using a wire mesh, one thing that's really handy, if you look at this behind me, have a look, hang on, let's have a look. Have a look at this. So the light always catches on wire mesh. Obviously it's silvery, isn't it? So it reflects light. It makes it harder to see through. Think about how your net work, your net curtains work on your windows. But if you paint them black, which I'll show you in a second, or in a while when they're in place, transforms them completely. So easiest way to do that, black masonry paint and a roller. Now, so ideally if you put a sheet down first, I don't know if you can see that, but even there, can you see how it all, how it all disappears? It's quite amazing. And once that's up off the floor, it makes it almost invisible. It completely transforms it. So in black masonry paint, just a roller. Probably don't ruin your lawn. Put a sheet down first. Roll it over the mesh. When that's up in place, completely, completely different. Almost invisible, whereas a silver mesh makes it really hard to see what's going on inside the enclosure. Because if you think about it, your net curtains work because the room's darker than it is outside. You can see outside into the light. People can't see through into a darker room. If you turn the light on at night, then you've got net curtains and no curtains. Everyone can see you. And it works the same principle. It's usually darker inside an enclosure than it is in the great outdoors. And it means you can see in and they can't see out. Top tip of the board. So it's here at last. My tree fern from Jackie for my 50th birthday. Late, who cares? I wanted one of these since I was about 20 years old. I don't know why, I absolutely love them. She splashed out and got me a pretty decent one. But as soon as the weather warms up, it's going to be fronds up there somewhere. Absolutely gorgeous. Come and have a look at it in here. They look just amazing while they're dormant like this. So some tricks to keeping them. Don't plant them too deep. They're too expensive. They only grow about a centimetre a year. So there's no point burying it in the ground like you're planting a tree you're going to lose 50 quid's worth of your tree fern. About four inches in, a stake or something until it roots, and it will root. They root well, believe it or not. And absolutely soak them, almost daily with a hose. That's really important, especially at the top here. Not water at the bottom, but soak the whole thing, with a especially at the top. They come from really humid, cool forests. We've seen them ourselves, similar things in the Australian Blue Mountains. Get a hard frost there in the winter. They're quite cold tolerant, but these forests are super damp for much of the year. They soak the whole thing regularly, daily in the summer. Protect the crown if it's gonna be really cold. Otherwise, this thing is gonna be gorgeous. Happy birthday to me, I say. Thank you.